Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well and welcome to, depending on wherever you may live or however you may look at your clock, this early morning or middle of the night bonus upload. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click the like button, takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to tonight's early morning or middle of the night bonus upload, shall we? Today's first encounter. I grew up in the state of Michigan in a small town called Port Austin near the Great Lake Huron. It's definitely a small town with not much to do besides peruse the mom and pop shops or go to a diner in the center of town and check out some cool classic cars at a show it held once a week. Whenever I could, I chose to escape the mundanity and go to my father's cabin in the neighboring city of Grindstone. It was a small country town with nothing much but woods, farmland, perfect for hunting and fishing. At the time, I was 14 years old, and I went up for the weekend with my older brother, a Marine straight out of Iraq, returning home that same weekend for a short hunting trip. My brother was tough as nails and wasn't afraid of anything, but that day, I would see a side of him I wouldn't soon forget. We took the ATV and headed out to the cornfield with the abandoned farmhouse. To set the scene, we were hunting pheasant in a cornfield that opens up to a clearing, and beyond that is dense woods. We entered from the opposite side, which is smaller, lighter woodsy area, but has a trail where we parked the ATV that leads out to the cornfield. We headed out fairly late, about 4 p.m. after fishing earlier that day and hadn't had much luck, so we were deciding to head back around 7 p.m. We were in the abandoned farmhouse I was exploring. My brother had sat down in an old chair and had a cigarette. He called me over to the front to check something out. His face was pale, and he choked out the words, look over there. I saw a huge wolf about 300 yards in the clearing ahead of me, standing on its hind legs. This thing was massive and covered in thick black fur. I couldn't really see how tall it exactly was from the distance, but its front legs looked huge and muscular with an odd-shaped torso, long, slender hind legs. My brother told me to grab one of the shotguns, and when he heard him, it turned and looked directly at us, seeming to be leering slightly. It then took a few strides on its hind legs, then went down on all fours and darted into the cornfield in the direction of the ATV. It was starting to get dark now. The sky was red, purple, and orange. We decided to enter the cornfield from the furthest end that this wolf went into. I was on flashlight duty while he walked ahead of me with the shotgun, and the entire time I felt like I was being watched. And I swear I heard nearby rustling and low growls and snarls when we would stop. Eventually, what was a ten-minute walk seemed to take an hour. We made it to the trail where the ATV was parked. I started to calm down now that I could see my surroundings better, and that's when I heard the iconic horror movie cliché of a branch or twig snap, followed by rustling in the cornfield behind us. I shined the flashlight on a patch of stalks where I thought I heard the movement, and sure enough, saw a pair of yellow reflective eyes about six feet high through the 
crack in the corn stalks. My brother yelled, fuck off. Then it let out a loud, eerie howl that sounded like it was right in my ear. My brother fired once, hitting the top of the stalk, and told me to hightail it to the ATV and get it started. I started it, and when I felt him jump on the back after me, I punched the throttle and floored it across the access road, and then onto the main road that cuts through the town. I looked behind me once and saw a huge black mass dart across the road quickly from out of the cornfield into the darkness of the woods. We headed back to the house in the town that night and didn't return until 12 p.m. the next day to collect our things from the cabin, still unnerved. I had always heard rumors of the Michigan Dog Man, but I always thought it was just an old wives' tale like the boogeyman that my dad told me to scare me straight as a child or just some state urban legend like the skunk ape of Florida or the chucacabra. This day, my brother and I talk about it over some beers, but it was definitely a scary experience for both of us. I still go hunting in those parts to this day, but haven't seen anything since, and I hope that I don't see it again. Today's Second Encounter I had served three years in the Marine Corps and am now working in the Painters Union. However, with COVID, a lot of work is being postponed or altogether canceled. So, I've got a lot of time to spend with family. One family member in particular is my brother. For this, I'll just call him G. One thing he enjoys doing is walking our grandfather's property surrounding woods, dirt roads at night. It's a good way to clear our heads, talk, and catch up on things. This particular night, we walked the 10-acre field, then proceeded down the driveway to the dirt road. The house is out in the boondocks, so it's mostly fields or woods. The driveway is roughly a quarter mile, bordered by cedar trees on either side. The dirt road cuts left sharply and is bordered by thick woods on both sides. Halfway down the driveway, I began to notice just how eerily quiet it was. No crickets, frogs, or anything. I wasn't sure how I hadn't noticed it before as we had already been out for at least an hour. Anyone who hunts or spends a lot of time in the woods will know that silence and know it's nature's way of saying something else is hunting right now. I asked G if he noticed it and he didn't say anything. He just nodded. I couldn't help but notice he continued looking over his shoulder. We continued down the dirt road, albeit more cautiously, until we grew complacent with the silence and began talking again. We went on like this for another half hour, talking about games, girls, cars, random generated topics. G was in the middle of speaking when I heard leaves crunching from our left. I stopped to listen, but there was nothing. I asked if he heard it, and he said no. At this point, we continue walking silently, and this time he heard it, but I did not. A faint stepping through the leaves next to him. We decided not to test it and turned to head back when we heard the leaves rustling violently, as though something was running back into the woods. All the way back to the driveway, we heard nothing. Despite not hearing or seeing anything, I felt like something was watching us waiting for us to slip up or lag. G could feel it as well, and that feeling persisted all the way back to the house. Once inside, we calmed down and decided to play some Call of Duty. Not any of the new, but we decided to play the throwback to World War Zombies. We're geeks, I know, but it's fun nonetheless. We played for hours until around 2.30, and when I went out to my truck to get my phone charger... I made my way over to the back door leading out to the field where the cedar tree that lined the driveway was to the right. My truck was roughly 50 yards from that door. As I stepped outside, I immediately felt off, as though danger was waiting. I brushed it off, ignored the silence, and walked through the yard into the field where it worked. But before even touching the handle of the vehicle door, I heard a grunt like huff from the edge of the cedar trees lining the driveway. I immediately assumed it was a deer, so I looked over, and when I did, I was petrified. 
standing just outside the tree line in the moonlight was the face black fur wolfish head yellowish orange eyes i could see it in full view on all fours it really did look like a huge wolf and it was staring right at me i wanted to run but then it stood up on its hind legs and somehow i found it even harder to move its face it took a small step toward me with a low growl now that i look back i think it was testing my aggressiveness like some dogs or wolves would i still wouldn't budge however when this thing curled its wolfish lips into what i can only describe a sadistic smile i finally broke and ran back into the house forgetting my charger it didn't even chase me i felt like it was just toying with me time to calm down i finally explained to g what i saw he didn't call me crazy or didn't disbelieve me i grew up around paranormal things and even some things when i served i hope i never see that thing again just because something hasn't been proven to exist doesn't mean it's not out there. After all, the gorilla was folklore for nearly a hundred years before it was proven to exist. There are things out there, and some of them are the stuff of nightmares. Today's third encounter. So my girlfriend and I had recently started dating, being young, 17 and 16, and dumb, we decided to sneak out as much as possible to stargaze. The first night was amazing. We found a spot not too far from her house. We hung out and checked out the stars. The second night was different. We went to the exact same spot and everything. The area felt off and uncomfortable. Then we heard tapping on the back of my car. This will remain a constant event, by the way. We decided to go to another spot and see if that was any better. We parked after five minutes of driving where a cornfield meets the forest. We felt better for about 15 minutes, then decided to chill in the car. After about a few minutes, the tapping started again. We immediately left. While looking for our third spot, we noticed a bridge on Google Maps, so we went there. Right as we got there, it felt so heavy and off. I don't know how to explain it. We sat there for about five minutes before I felt this pressure on my head, and all my senses felt dull. That's the best way to describe it. My girlfriend asked if I was okay. I tried saying no, but I couldn't. I said yes without any control. After a couple of minutes, there was a loud scratch on the back of my car. I know it wasn't a branch or anything. There were no trees close enough to scratch my car. We shot up and left. I dropped her off at her house and started on my way home. Not even a minute after I dropped her off, she said something grabbed her. She had scratches. I stopped to make sure I didn't have to go and help her. I feel like something was behind my car. I look in the mirrors and I see this figure. Everything about it looks off. It was pure white. I looked at my passenger window and there's another one looking at me, almost studying me. I sped home that night. The next night we wanted answers, so we made a visit to every location. First off was the stargazing spot, then the cornfield, and last the bridge. The stargazing spot and the cornfield didn't feel as bad as the previous night. Then we reached the bridge. It was unbearable being there. But I was dead set on getting answers and getting peace with the situation. So being 17 and stupid, I get out of the car. I walked a few good feet in front of the car, and standing in the tree line was my girlfriend. She looked me dead in the eyes and said, help me. I stepped forward out of natural instinct. Then I realized a few things. My girlfriend was in the car. The thing trying to act like my girlfriend had a jaw unhinged and its eyes were cloudy dead looking. This one, the worst. There was this big bony hand on the right shoulder. I ran to my car door and drove off. It's pretty hard to shake me or make me scared, but that turned me into a five-year-old little girl. I dropped her off and went home. She went on vacation, and the temptation to go there myself was hard to resist. I ended up not going and waiting for her to get back. 
she got back and we wanted to see each other. Why not? Most of the time was okay until about 2.30. The cows at a nearby farm started to get a little noisy. We decided to sit in my car for a bit and that's what we did. 3.15 comes around and it's time to take her home. I drop her off and continue on my way. I get to the first stop sign and standing in the middle of the road with my girlfriend. But everything was just off about her. She looked wrong. Then she said, help me. I know it's not actually her, so I drive off. As I do, this thing's blood-curdling, heart-stopping screech. I look at my phone to see a text from her saying she saw me in her backyard and I was asking for help. As she's about to run inside, this large, bony hand grabs her head and then she books it back inside. Update. I was dumb and decided to go to the bridge myself. When I got there, I felt normal for a few minutes. Out of nowhere, there's this heavy feeling in my chest and my head. I kind of shove it off and don't think too much about it. The only way I can describe it is that I felt all my muscles in my face start to be pulled off. I realized I had to pee, so I stepped out and walked to the tree line. Right as I finished, I noticed something staring at me. I realized I was looking at my girlfriend. I said, hey, why are you out here? Are you okay? It was at this point I realized that my girlfriend is at her house sleeping, which is a good 15 minutes away. The thing said, you help me. I need help. Her voice was flawless and perfect. I stepped forward out of instinct. When I got within arm's reach, it lunged at me. I blacked out. When roughly an hour had passed, I didn't know where I was. I checked my phone. The time read 345. I looked at Life 360 and saw where the bridge was and my car. I was about a little over a mile away. I'm not in the best shape, but I needed to get to my car. So I ran as hard as I could to my car, made it there in about 15 minutes. When I got in, I locked all the doors and started crying my eyes out for half an hour. I needed to get home, so I pulled out and started on my way back. As I reached the stop sign, there was this scream and someone shouting help in my girlfriend's voice. I knew it wasn't her. I pulled onto the road and sped home. The entire time they followed me home and screamed the entire time to go the entire time back. After that night, nothing else had happened. We really have no idea what that thing or things were. I wanted to share that encounter with you. I've got a ton of encounters, not just Dogman, a lot of different things that are very strange um, out in the wooded area of America and other countries. But, you know, I just, I can't help but wonder. Every time I hear a story like this that has no definitive, like, creature, like a Sasquatch is a Sasquatch. A dog man is a dog man. These things that people call the rake, which is a creepy pasta, please don't argue with me on that because the quote historical facts are made up. It is a true creepy pasta. There is no such thing as the rake, please. That's the God's honest truth. But there are creatures that resemble this thing. Now, I want to think that they come from these portals and I really do believe they do because there's no other explanation maybe they come from underground but for some reason I believe they come from these portals and these are the things that scare me worse than the dog man and the sasquatch I don't know why they do but they do they freak me out I'd much rather, and I have seen a dog man. I would much rather see the dog man or experience that night that I experienced with my friends back in 1994 than see one of these things. I don't know why, but that's just how I feel. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you.
Today's fourth encounter. This took place a year ago. Before we go any further into this experience, I'm going to explain how my house is set up as it's important. My house is an old two-story house. It has one front door, and that is the only way in and out of the house. The stairs that lead to my room upstairs are on the left. The living room and bathroom are straight in front of the door, as the bathroom is behind the living room. The night started off as many others do with my friends Ian and Ethan, not their real names, coming over. We're playing the new game of Call of Duty. Watching anime, talking about what normal teenage boys talk about, just hanging out. About 11.30, we're right in the middle of watching the new Dragon Ball Z Super. When I look down at my cup and realize that I'm out of soda, so I tell Ian and Ethan I'll be right back. I make my way downstairs to the kitchen, I grab the two liter out of the fridge, and I caught a glimpse of a hairy hand in my kitchen window. It was grabbing a steak that we had left out onto the counter. We had left the window open because earlier that day we burned pizza rolls and it smelled really bad. Anyway, as I see this hairy hand I freeze in place as behind the hand is what looked like a human body, but something was wrong. As I looked more upward, I realized that the hand of this beast looked like a dog-slash-wolf hybrid. I dropped the two-liter of soda, and it realized that I had noticed it and pulled its hand out of the window, causing the window to drop and close. It took off into the woods, and I hear a slight bark come from the front yard, realizing that my dog Obi A German shepherd was still outside. I heard him as he was sprinting around the house. Obi usually never barks at anything, even other animals, so I knew that the thing must have been pure evil. I ran over to the window to see Obi vanish into the woods that sat behind our house. I ran back upstairs to get Ian and Ethan and explain that Obi had ran off and they agreed to help me find him. I left out the part of me seeing that creature. I couldn't let my dog, Obi, die. I would be terrified if anything happened to him. I wouldn't be able to live with myself. Anyway, we grabbed our flashlights and ran into the woods. Obi, now in the woods, we continued to... When I heard a familiar scream, it was Ian. We ran over to see him standing right in front of the beast I saw earlier. I also forgot to mention, before we ran outside, I grabbed my Springfield AR-15, as we are all over 18 and enjoy target shooting. I pulled the rifle up to my shoulder and also made sure my friend wasn't anywhere in the line of sight and fired, hit center mass as the creature let out this terrible screech. As it ran off, we three regrouped shocked at what we saw. They headed back toward the house. I looked under where the creature was standing, and my heart broke. I saw limp Obi lying on the ground. I ran over and picked him up. Tears were flowing down my face. I ran to my car and took him to the nearest vet, which was luckily still open. They said he had two broken legs, and his recovery would take a couple of months, but he would be 100% in no time. So, I am glad to say that he is running and being a dog just fine nowadays. We still haven't seen that creature since that day. Sorry for the bad details. This is the first time that I've shared this encounter with anyone. All right, folks, I hope you all enjoyed this middle of the night or early morning bonus as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. It is your support, after all, that helps the channel to continue to grow and go. And honestly, what gives people a place to share their experiences, ideas, and theories, judgment and ridicule free, simply treated with the respect that we all deserve. Thank you. Please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant. Keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there and they are dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for answers, and God bless.